Okay, so I, I kind of completed my answer choices list here. And you'll notice I've got now my answer choices is a list of four different lists where each sublist has the answers for my four questions or answer choices for my my four questions. And notice that in each, you know, for, for this first one, the answer, show, you know, the real answer, which is in answer list shows up. And for the second one, COBOL shows up. Whoops, I better type that in wrong. Okay, so I want I want to make sure it's all caps, right? Um, not NASA shows up as in, in my answer choices and then read versus read, of course, shows up. Make sure that's true or, or you're not gonna be able to check your answers correctly. Okay, so we've got this answer choices list. Um, the only thing we need to do is we need to do a little more work so that the right choices show up at the right time. Okay, in fact, when the screen opens, we don't just want to always show the same answer list now, you know, that those are really the correct answers. And instead, you know, at least when the screen opens, we want to show the first answer list. Okay, so I'm kind of going to do what I do here with actually showing the questions. Um, but I'm going to set my text items to now I'm going to grab from answer choices list, get the first thing. Okay, and the first thing in answer choices lists is a list, right? So I always want to set my list viewers text items to a list. And in fact, I'm doing that because grabbing the first item from this list gives me the sub list with Knoxville, Montgomery and Houston. Okay, of course, when they click the user clicks next, I also need to do something similar here. So I'm going to copy that code. And in my next button, you know, my list viewer text items, I don't want to grab the first one. I want to grab the indexed item. Uh, so let me copy. Uh, let me just go grab the reference to index. And I'm just going to change that one to index. So now, you know, when the screen opens, I show the first sub list. And every time they click next, I show the, the current sub list. And notice I'm always grabbing from choices list. Okay, I don't know. Let's test this out. Let's see. Let's see. I think we're getting pretty close to a decent, decent quiz here. Uh, when I run it, um, okay, cool. For Rosa Parks, it's now showing those three things. Let's see if I can still get it correct. Uh, so Montgomery is is not giving me the correct answer. Hmm. Yeah, I, I know that is correct. I think they're let's see, they're all saying incorrect. So let's go and see if we can figure out this this bug. Um, first thing I want to do is let's just make sure that this Montgomery, Alabama in my answer choices list is exactly the same as my uh, in my answer list. So let's see if I can find my answer list first. Oh, here it is. Okay. So Montgomery, Alabama, I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to make sure that I don't just have like a weird typo. And I'm going to now paste the one I copied from the actual answer list. And let's see if this, this helps us out. Okay. Um, let's go back to the designer, do a preview. And if I click on Montgomery, okay, now it's correct. Okay. So you know, I grab some text and like I was saying, you need to be very careful about like if there's an extra space or an extra comma, it's got to be exact. So, you know, when you're building that thing, you know, grab the, for the, for the right answer, grab that from answer list and paste it into your answer choices. Um, but let's do some more testing. Knoxville, incorrect, good. Okay, let's go to the next page. Um, Grace Hopper, the answer is COBOL. Let's see if I click COBOL. Correct, good. If I click Pascal, incorrect. So it looks like I got it right. And now I'm showing kind of answer choices that make sense for, for every question.